I am so excited about a new series that we're starting where we look at that sweet spot where philosophy, theology and science overlaps. Some of the most profound ideas are found in that spot. Uh, the concepts, the ideas that we're going to uh, be exploring during this series are ideas that have profoundly influenced me enriched my experience and we're also going to have uh, some guests some of the foremost thinkers within this area as the series uh, develops today though I just want to quickly look at those three concepts uh, the philosophy science and theology to just give a little framework um, of what I find very useful uh, w when dealing with these three disciplines. Because very often, uh, you know, theologians might not know that they're simply busy with philosophy. Uh, very often scientists who profess to give scientific data are actually moving into the area of philosophy. And there's no problem with that if you are actually aware of the fact that you know what I am currently communicating is not scientific fact it is philosophical speculation based on the data that's fine but very often I have found especially theologians <laughs> make and that's just because of the area and the circles that we move in they make uh, theological statements uh, giving the impression that there is scientific data that supports it. And that can actually be quite deceptive at times. So there, there is a place where science, theology and philosophy overlap. And when we can clearly see the different disciplines, something very beautiful uh, can happen in that space. Philosophy, that is one of the concepts that I have often found some of our believer, believing friends have found problematic. They're a little bit scared of the terminology. They want to, you know, occupy themselves with theology or the word, not with philosophy. The truth is that uh, it's very difficult to even speak and communicate concepts without the philosophical categories of understanding that undergirds those concepts. The word itself, uh, philosophy, comes from, is made up of two Greek words, philia, which means love, sophia, uh, which is the word for wisdom. And Proverbs 3 and Proverbs 8, you know, extols the virtue of loving wisdom, of desiring wisdom above all things, that wisdom, there's a benefit, a, a disproportionate benefit that comes to those who love wisdom. So that most basic meaning of wisdom, uh, of philosophy, which is the love of wisdom, is something that you can be absolutely comfortable with as a biblical attitude towards truth uh, and wisdom. I understand as well that, you know, there's a philosophic discipline, academic discipline, which is often very different from our theological insights. And you know, it's good to see those differences. Uh, but we're going to look at those areas where they complement, where, where the synergy actually brings out benefits in our understanding and our communication of truth that is exponentially more when we combine these different perspectives in looking at concepts such as, um, such as time. Time is for me one of those, those concepts that, that both science, philosophy and theology has 
much to wonder about, much to speculate about, and and when you can see it from all three perspectives, the the meaning is, is um, profound. So we uh, maybe I should tell you who some of the guests are, or <laughs> I think I I will leave that as a surprise. But we look forward to to the weeks to come and the series of these videos. Also, what I wanted to quickly just make you aware of is we started a new podcast called Question Your Answers Podcast. The website is qyouraypodcast.com and I'll put the link below there. And on a weekly basis, every Monday, we've got a new podcast coming out. If you haven't subscribed to that yet, please go and look at the website. It's available on Apple and Spotify and all the um, major platforms for podcasts. We look forward to the discussions coming in the next few months. Bless you. Bye.